Today, I'm trying Delta's business class product, Delta One, on a flight from London to New York. The flight departed from Heathrow's Terminal 3, where Delta shares check-in zone A with partner Virgin Atlantic. There were dedicated check-in desks for Virgin Upper Class and Delta One. Or at least that's what the signage said. When I got to the check-in counter, I was told I was at the wrong desk and should have gone to the Sky Priority desk instead. I pointed to the signage and said that I'd been directed to this desk by a member of staff. In a fairly aggressive tone, I was then told I wasn't listening to what they were telling me. It was a very poor check-in experience, and I subsequently filed a complaint with the airline. From check-in, a lift took me to the Virgin Upper Class Wing, where there was a private security lane. It was then off through Duty 3 in the departure lounge to find the Virgin Clubhouse. Delta 1 passengers are invited to use this business lounge. There was a bit of a queue at security whilst passengers removed liquids from their baggage and put them into clear plastic bags. The Virgin Clubhouse was busy, but it wasn't too difficult to find a quiet corner. A range of hot breakfast dishes were available to order, alongside hot and cold drinks. I had the Clubhouse breakfast, which was a perfect snack size ahead of the flight. From the lounge, it was a good five minute walk to the gate on the remote pier. Arriving at the gate, my documents were checked and I was invited to board the aircraft straight away. The flight was on a Boeing 767-400ER aircraft, registration N842MH. It was 21 years old. Delta One seating was in the front cabin of the aircraft, with 34 suites in a staggered 121 configuration. I was in seat 6A. The seat had a width of 21 inches and reclined to form a 77 inch bed. Beside the seat was a fixed counter with headphones hanging from a hook next to a bottle of water. In front were the seat controls and a power socket and two USB ports. The controller for the entertainment system was under the armrest. Sparkling wine or juice were offered pre-departure. If you're enjoying this review, please do subscribe for future videos. An amenity kit was provided. It included eye mask and earplugs, 
toothbrush and toothpaste, lip balm and hand cream, and a pen. Slippers were also provided. The aircraft pushed back from the gate more or less on time as the safety video played. Welcome aboard and thank you for flying with Delta. The health and safety of our customers and crew is our number one priority and the shared responsibility of everyone on board. We had a relatively short taxi to the south runway 27 left. The flight time to New York JFK was estimated to be 7 hours 15 minutes, meaning we would arrive 45 minutes ahead of schedule. Soon after takeoff, a fresh towelette was served. settled down to check out the entertainment system. Pre-departure were informed the Wi-Fi network was broken and wouldn't be available on today's flight. Good quality headphones were provided, which were comfortable to wear. The system had a substantial range of movies from the latest releases through to classic films. Unfortunately, there was an issue with the system, which needed to be fully rebooted. After about 10 minutes, it was up and running again. I watched the classic 1933 movie, 42nd Street. The service started about 20 minutes after takeoff. Tablecloths were laid out as drinks were served. I opted for a gin and tonic and was handed two miniature bottles of Bombay Sapphire. This came with a small bowl of cheese, dried fruits and nuts. The meal started with butternut squash soup and a curried carrot and courgette salad. On the wine front, I opted for red, where there was a choice between a Bordeaux and a Rioja. There was a choice of three main courses. I opted for the chicken tikka masala. The food was good, although the curry could have been a little spicier.
with the food tray cleared away, the dessert trolley then came around. I opted for the ice cream sundae, which had a range of toppings on offer. The ice cream rounded off a nice meal service. The crew were very attentive, checking everything was okay each time they walked by. There were two bathrooms, one at the front and one at the rear of the cabin. They were compact, but didn't show much sign of wear. The rear bathroom had a baby changing mat. At the rear of the cabin, a small snack basket was available throughout the flight. I put the seat into bed mode. A pillow and blanket were provided. The fixed counter meant it was difficult to manoeuvre into the reclined bed, which was a little tight. The blanket was nice and soft. I dozed for a few hours and missed the mid-flight cookie. But ahead of landing, a second meal was served. There was a choice of afternoon tea or a ploughman's plate. I chose the ploughman's, which came with a side of fresh fruit and a slice of bread. It was a tasty snack. Soon, it was time for the descent. There was some turbulence. We came in to land on runway 31 left and taxied to Terminal 4. Overall, the flight was very good. Putting the bad check-in experience to one side, the Virgin Clubhouse was a great lounge. On board, the food was tasty and of a high standard, and the cabin crew provided a friendly and attentive service. The seat was comfortable, but a little tight when in bed mode. Soon, we were deplaning and heading to immigration. Baggage appeared within 10 minutes, my case was the third off the belt. Let me know what you think of the review. Like, comment and share. And don't forget to subscribe for future videos.